G'day, how you going? In today's video, we've got some Ignin Bright, and we're going to break it open and see what it looks like inside the structure. So this is the Ignin Bright that I got from Nigretta Falls, and around it is quite eroded. You can see some of the structure inside, uh, but let's even get a, a fresher example. So here I have it on a brick and we're going to compare it with this rhyolite so this is a light colored rhyolite you can get it in darker shades as well depending on the actual composition and here we have a granite so large crystals of feldspar and quartz mainly with smaller crystals of looks like muscovite mica and horn blend. So let's get on with it. And as you can see, this is actually quite a hard rock. And I'm more likely to actually break the brick than this rock. Here we go. All right. And there we have the internal structure. And it's quite similar to that. But all this rock went all over the place. A lot of fragments went all around here. So this is pretty similar to the clay. So this is cl fired clay. And the ignin bright pretty much forms in what not really a similar fashion. But it is a volcanic extrusive rock. So it's like the rhyolite. But it comes from either pyroclastic flows. Or how uh, the volcanic ash that falls to the ground. So there's various... Uh, I'm not too familiar with the how it forms. But I know that the rock is very distinctive when you break it open. So you can see a lot of this is uh, like a brownish color. That's uh, the eroded section. And here we have the fresh sample, which is a lot lighter. So it's mainly feldspars and quartz that are uh, formed in there. I think they call it a glassy texture. So I do do some research before we I actually make these videos. And the only thing I'm a bit confused with is how this actually forms. And uh, Wikipedia does have a an entry which is really confusing. Uh, and the publications oh, I've not got around to actually reading. So, but the main factors of this is that it can form as a massive structure. So this is just a massive so it could have been formed over one period or you know, over various eruptions or it can have laminations like sedimentary rock the one thing that it, they do have that is pretty peculiar to this type of rock is large quartz crystals it does have large feldspars can have micas and sometimes hornblende but mainly because this is a class as a rhyolitic ignin bright so when they say rhyolitic they're talking about rhyolite so this is rhyolite itself looks like chalk it's very fine grain it's a crystal structure you need a microscope to actually see and it's white so this has a lot of feldspars in it so probably uh, calcium sodium feldspars and that's what gives it the actual white color it also has a uh, potassium feldspars isn't it, as well and because this is extruded uh, the crystals are quite small and because this one's intruded so this didn't actually reach the surface it'll cool down over hundreds or even thousands of years from the ground so it adds large crystal structures of the 
grey colour are quartz. The pinkish colour is feldspars. And we do have some horn blends and micas, which are the darker colours, but they make up a small proportion. And if we look at the ignin bright, you can see it's definitely different in composition. So how did these crystal structures formed? Well, these are minerals, but you can also have rocks that actually are intruded in it. Looks like it also has a fume. So this is like a, a hair type structure, a long longitudinal type structure, and so this would have been just a, a single rock, it looks like. So as the rock was very hot, it's welded together. So this looks like it's been welded together, so it would have been hot enough to weld together. Um, but if it's not hot enough, then the welding was either due to pressure or probably even fluids uh, reducing the melting pressure of the actual rock. Uh, so this is, would have been a pumice lapilli. It would have been flattened. And that's when it appears as a fume. So when it's actually flattened. And if you see... Phenocrysts, so the phenocrysts are the actual rock crystals and large quartz. They could have been formed in the magma before it was erupted by the volcano. They could have come from other igneous rocks, either in magma or as a rock, or even the country rock as well. So if the country rock was another magma, uh, another granite, then they could have remelted most of that rock. Maybe the quartz was left over, was not the remounted part, and it is included into the uh, lava when it erupted as an unmounted portion. So the fine matrix of this rock is a ground mass of glass shards. So it's just pretty much like broken glass. That's what the ground mass is. And... Uh, it may be destroyed during the welding process. So as this rock is very hard, so it's been welded quite well, uh, part of that could have been it's just been welded and it actually was erupted and hit the surface, or it could have been due to pressure. So this was buried underground for quite a long time, and the pressure could have compressed it and forced the welding or the sediment cementation of the rock together and another large quartz crystal quartz so most of it's quartz i don't see any feldspar crystals uh, why maybe that's a rock fragment there another rock fragment because they don't really look like any type of feldspar they could be but unless you get a chemical analysis of this rock, uh, it's a bit hard to tell. So let's uh, zoom in and have a look. Yeah, so you can see the actual fragments of rock. So that is very interesting. I quite like this rock. I like Indian bright. I'm not too familiar with it because um, this type of rock I have not come across before. And I haven't really did not want to uh, research it but over the next few weeks that's what I'm gonna do so this is the difference between these three types of rocks so we've got rhyolite ignin bright which are both extrusive means they come out of the volcano and granite which is an intrusive rock so if we have a look at those again and the mineral composition of these is pretty similar. There is slight variation between the three, but if they occurred in the same location, come from the same batholith or the magma body, uh, they would have just the same composition. And uh, thank you very much for watching my video. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions or if you want to correct me on something, please leave a comment down below. 
Have an awesome geological time. Thank you and goodbye.